fourth speaker, third speaker in this session, John McGinty. John serves as Head of Public Transit at Mozio, a San Francisco-based ground transportation aggregation company. They're building the world's first truly multimodal urban mobility platform. John served as a research associate at the Urban Institute and co-authored What If Cities Could Create a Truly Inclusive Local Sharing Economy. John McGinty. Thank you. As you mentioned, I'm from the States. Um, I almost wanted to spend this 15 minute presentation apologizing for Donald Trump, but as a writer, I might start crying, so I'm going to talk about the company I work for. Um, so I work for Mozio. Um, we view ourselves as the Expedia for ground transportation. Um, so we aggregate and sell ground transportation to people looking for traffic. And I head up our public transit partnership, so I'm going to kind of come in things from that angle. So, in 2016, travelers have more ground transportation options than ever before. You can take an on-demand subway, and then mobile is what have you. Um, and with all these different emerging first and last mile players, um, there's a lot of sorting through to find who is friend or foe of public transit. Um, some people are aggressively trying to compete with public transit itself. Um, this is a Facebook advertisement I got living in Washington, D.C. earlier this year, um, saying not to waste my time taking the metro. Um, I was up in New York uh, earlier this summer as well and was advertised a commuter card, um, where I was advised to avoid the sticky subway rides, crowded buses, and sweaty walks. Um, that being said, I took an Uber this morning to get here because it's easy, it's convenient, and everything needs to be as seamless as we're moving forward for people to use it in terms of being a compelling value proposition. So at Mozio, we believe that each city has its own unique transportation staff and that the role will continue to be multimodal and dominated by more than one player for a variety of reasons from competition to different regulations and cultural norms around the world. And we view this as a tremendous opportunity. And we've rehashed a lot of these different opportunities today. The opportunity to move people around uh, more efficiently, more eco-friendly, and more economical ways. Um, you know, to connect them to their destinations in ways they wouldn't have been able to before through multimodal mapping, tracking, and issuing tickets to allow someone to take a public transit provider, then hop on a private taxi, what have you, to be able to kind of um, serve the areas and enter the markets. We view that as essential. The problem is that booking tickets are tough. Um, you know, all sorts of different ticketing technologies, all sorts of different systems, suppliers. Um, you land in a new place, you understand um, without any familiarity with that ecosystem how to get around. That's the type of anxiety we try to solve for people. And finally, um, on that note, what is encouraging is we're finally starting to see APIs open up, as you mentioned earlier, and that gives us an opportunity to be able to aggregate that and help people navigate the process. So as the APIs open up, we plug in, and through doing so, we're able to work with a variety of players across the ground transportation spectrum. This is particularly true within the public transit space and where I see a lot of opportunity. Um, over 50 public transit agencies have mobile ticketing today or some form of open loop contact list that we're able to plug in and work with. Um, and more on the way, as they open up, we plug in and we're able to facilitate multi-modal travel. And so our vision uh, is essentially going to the ultimate urban mobility app. Um, it's helping get from point A to point B um, as seamlessly as possible. And we basically, if you think of, you know, geometric shapes, those puzzles that kids have where you're plugging square pegs into holes. We essentially, underneath the hood, are able to pair the square, plug the you know, square peg into the square hole and all the different shapes and aggregate that. So from the customer standpoint, all they need to do is figure out where they want to go, which we help them do, and then we're able to issue the tickets and help them get there. So four years ago, when we started, um, we started with a very specific use case. <laughs> We started in the traveler, uh, travel industry because we viewed um, traveling as kind of the most stressful, anxious, ridden process for people that are unable to navigate new systems and opportunities. Um, so what we did is we set out and we forged uh, several large distribution partnerships with anyone ranging from Booking.com, Postals.com, Skyscanner, Kayak, and more. So if you've ever used those sites and you kind of book a flight or you book a hotel, we white label all the ground transportation for those entities. Um, and then we're able to interact with people through several um, 
points thereafter and confirmation emails lead up to your trip. So that's kind of how we've made um, money to date so far by taking commissions off of those transactions and facilitating people finding ground transportation in the areas they're visiting and traveling in. Um, and then two years ago, we expanded into the corporate travel space. Um, so we've signed deals with three of the, large, three of the four largest corporate travel firms. Um, and we do business travel as a, you know, a large customer stuff into people that are high frequency travelers that we're able to plug in. And people who might, you know, take a taxi or take a car or rent a car um, on the road, that we can actually drive them towards using public transit and more eco-friendly forms of transit if we're able to do that. So, and so and we're actually on um, white labeling different apps and working with these entities so we can toggle different options. So maybe the CEO can take the black car, but actually regular employees need to take public transit or take the bus, and, you know, um, plug them in that way. So from that perspective, we can actually kind of steer customer behavior and actually plug people into using public transit in different localities. Um, so to date, we've integrated over 2,800 suppliers, ground transportation uh, providers on our platform. So anything from sedan services, shuttles, express trains, um, on-demand, taxis, you name it, trams, buses, everything. Um, so we have the option to really sell anyone whatever they want. And that gives us a tremendous amount of leeway in being able to stitch journeys together and being able to facilitate going from one to the other as well. So we've built a 65 person team. I'm from the States, but I'm actually only the fourth American in our company. Um, Europe is our largest market. We do a lot of work in Asia and South America as well, in different markets. Um, so we truly are a worldly company and rapidly <coughs> as well. So, Heading back to the public transit use case, um, there's 61 billion yearly journeys in the UK that came out of the report um, that was released by you guys. And the problem is all of these business persons and tourists and even occasional, occasional transit users within cities that don't use public transit that often, maybe they're going out with friends or going to a game, they don't know how to navigate the process and it's very confusing. Um, I've been to London several times, but I was there yesterday and my Apple Pay didn't work on the tube and then my Oyster card didn't have money on it machine didn't take my car to top it off and I was more or less stuck. And that's kind of the model of how to get around. So that's really what we're trying to solve. As many people simply give up and call a taxi or take a car that's you know polluting the atmosphere and contributing um, to things we're trying to avoid. Um, and lots of agencies are starting to be forward you know, unveiling their own mobile ticketing apps, which is great. But the problem is one, commuters know how to get around. If there's one thing I know how to do, it's to get to work and back as quickly as possible. Um, but there are all these different use cases. You don't want to purchase or download a card, download an individual app, upload a payment mechanism, and figure out where they're going just for one or two rounds. So those are all the use cases we view that if we can facilitate that and plug it in, we can drive ridership to use public transit in these different types of entities. <coughs> These are just several use cases. Um, for example, you know, someone traveling on business, um, they're, they're kind of preoccupied, they're probably not going to download a specific app to take a specific bus. But if we can integrate that onto a platform where it's more agnostic and they say, oh, we'd also get me here quicker, or the subway's quicker during rush hour than taking a taxi, it works there and they use a better form of transit. If my parents that are vacation, don't, they're not going to download a specific app to download an express train to buy tickets to get to their destination. But if we're integrated and working with airports and working with entities and working with hotels, we can facilitate that travel and have them not take a taxi. Um, same thing for, for relatives that are having trouble navigating different you know, cities and systems and friends going out at night who certain people might have cards or people might not you know, the, the, the different um, ticketing mechanism necessary. We're able to kind of lift that up and make it seamless for everybody to do. And so the problem is all these use cases call an Uber or call a taxi, and we're trying to take cars off the road. Um, so what we do is we help you tap into these customer segments. So basically, by integrating into all these different distribution platforms, we allow operators to get visibility on our platform to compete with these other entities, and not only to compete, but also be part of the multimodal solution as well. So instead of someone just taking a taxi, they say, oh, I can take the airport shuttle to the city center and then grab a cheaper taxi there or what have you. So the, the, end, the, the end cases are useless, or the use cases are endless in terms of what we're able to facilitate and do. So that's our vision and sort of how do we get there? How do we make it so you can take a lift you know, to a bar in San Francisco or take a, a taxi to the metro in DC or kind of the bus to the tram and get around the city in the UK? 
Well, um, we've already integrated several on demand players um, that we're working with um, and moving forward with more. We are already working with National Express and the first group in National Rail and a variety of players, including Airport Express Lines um, and various things within the UK. Um, and as well as Train Italia and Deutsche Bahn and different types of rail as well to really kind of stitch together whatever you need to move around and get around. We're really going to try to um, stitch that journey together for you. And we're also part of MasterCard Start Path Program, their incubator. So we're working with them very closely on being able to work with closed loop contact systems through postcard regulations, be able to once again take that onto your mobile device so you don't have to pay five pounds to get a mobile card, top it up, keep it in your wallet, don't lose it, it can be on your Google phone, stored there electronically and securely and stitched together with other apps. Um, mobile move systems are working with a variety of other products to seamlessly facilitate that. And then we work with existing mobile ticketing players to issue QR codes, flash passes, all of that can all be integrated into the same app. And that's our vision. So in six weeks, uh, we'll be launching. So we've been web-based and more white labeling for our distribution partners to date, and then six weeks will be going live um, with our multimodal mobility app, which will facilitate kind of personal tailored mobility to kind of stitch together all these different types of rides to allow you to compare um, the time it'll take you to take a taxi versus taking the train to the bus, what have you. Um, and, and it's really important step forward because everyone has their own price and time sensitivity. Sometimes I'm willing to take the bus for 40 minutes, sometimes I'm stuck, you know, I need to get to a meeting, I need to take a taxi and get there quicker. So it's, it's not about necessarily steering people towards using specific modes of transit because the different types of transit we need can change depending on the specific <coughs> of your space you come within ourselves, but it's really giving those options, facilitating the mapping and routing, but then also aggregating all of the booking. So really the booking becomes an afterthought. It's, it's easy, it's just in your, your passbook, your wallet, your Mosey app, you're ready to go. Um, I'm going to skip over this slide and speak more generally. And so I think more UK specific, um, you know, we're, we're going around, we're doing pilots in different areas. Um, obviously with regulations it's different in terms of, it's much more operator driven here than in the States. So we're in the States, we're able to pair with specific agencies themselves to kind of roll out um, face to face solutions. Um, I think there's an opportunity for here to us to work alongside localities, but also because we can individually aggregate operators onto our platform because they see the business value in these markets we can open up for them, uh, we're, we can be an effective intermediary in terms of kind of building more collaboration in, towards, in terms of kind of region-wide solutions um, because we're kind of sitting that nexus and because they're already on our platform already and kind of have the market shares there, we're able to kind of have the coverage and stitch together solutions that can be safe. So that's all I really have for you guys. Um, there's my contact information. I'm looking forward to the panel. Thank you very much for your time.